Welcome back to the journey to CCIE with none other than Ronnie Wong. My name is Anthony Sequera, and I am thrilled that you are joining us for this episode because I'm going to be sharing with everyone from a strategy perspective the single most important thing that I came up with in my strategy. So, Ronnie, you know, uh, you and I have chatted about this a lot. When it comes to CCIE success, it's not just the knowledge of technology. You also have to have a real great solid strategy come exam day. And like I said, this one made all of the difference in the world for me, Ronnie. And it means a lot of different things to different people. So I call it simply dividing tasks into core and non-core tasks. Ronnie, have you ever heard that expression before associated with the CCIE? Uh, I have not. Now, Anthony, before you get into that, can, can you kind of tell us like the first time that you took it, how did you approach it? And then how did you come up with this? Yeah, yeah. Okay, that's an excellent idea. Thank you. So, so what happened was I took a, like two or three attempts at the lab and I had no real strategy, Roddy. Like my strategy was, okay, start at the first task, right? And then just start configuring and move all the way to the last task, you know? Just do the tasks in order. Some had spoken to me about, oh no, Anthony, you got to read all the tasks and then start with your strongest technology area, or always start with layer two, or always start with, you know, uh, checking the initial configs. Everybody had this different advice on how you were going to start that configuration section. And note, we're not focusing on the design in this episode. We'll talk more about that in future episodes. But for that configuration section, yeah, Ronnie, I was just like going through it top to bottom. And then I discovered something. And that was, uh, I heard a lot of people talking about, oh, you got to know your core tasks real well. And then when I would explore what's a core task, a lot of them would say things like, well, it's fundamental technologies like OSPF, RIP, 802.1Q. And I was like, "Mm, well, that doesn't really make much sense to me. (laughs) How is it going to help me to, you know, if, if an OSPF task is worth two points, and some non-core thing like port security is worth two points, well, who cares? They're both worth two points. So what I really started thinking about was, okay, wait a minute, all tasks are not created equal as far as your success in the section goes, so let me explain that. This is what I call core versus non-core tasks. So Ronnie, you know, questions that we can get answered here for ourselves is, What task are we going to start with? This can help us where we're going to be starting in the config section. And then this is a huge one. You'll often hear people say, oh my gosh, you can skip a couple of these things. Don't even waste your time and still pass. All right, well, what could we skip? And this also talks about a little bit what you might want to consider Yeah, as far as what order should you be studying things in, right? It feels a little weird if you're studying something that's like not gonna make or break you in the test. So we might wanna prioritize our studying. So here is my official definition of a core task. And I don't think I've ever just made it written like this right in front of us before. These are tasks that help achieve full connectivity. So another way I describe this, Ronnie, is a core task, if not completed, causes you to miss other points. Okay. It's as simple as that. Yeah, makes sense, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, let me give an example. At layer two, we have a task that's uh, that's asking us to configure a trunk between switch one and switch four. Clearly core, because if you don't get that trunk working, Ronnie, you're going to miss a whole bunch of points that rely on that functional trunk. Okay. A layer uh, three example would be configuring OSPF version two between R1, R4, and R5. Don't get that done, and now you lose your points for redistribution. And now you lose your points for some machine getting to another machine going across those networks. So 
These are tasks that we really have to do. Now, you could cheat, and this is when it is okay to cheat in the lab exam. And what I mean by that is, if you couldn't configure OSPF between R1, R4, and R5 for some reason, what would you do? Well, you can't skip this entirely because now you'll miss other points. So what you would do is configure RIP. <laughs> well, actually, don't pick RIP. Don't ever pick RIP. Huh. So uh, configure EIGRP, right? So yeah, you lost these points on OSPF, but at least you get the full connectivity there and you'll get the other points. When you're cheating, don't violate the initial rules of the exam. So if they said you can't create static routes without permission, oh my gosh, don't cheat by creating static routes. So non-core tasks are those tasks that don't help you achieve full reachability. Mm -hmm. So you can skip these tasks and all you will lose is those couple of points. And a layer two example, tune the switch to scale routing capabilities. So this is referring to that SDM template where we can say, I want you to take your resources and appropriate them this way, and it's for routing. If we do that or don't do it, it's not going to affect anything else. We'll just miss those points. Configure OSPF LSA throttling in the OSPF environment. If we do it, successfully great, we get those points. If we don't, we don't lose any surrounding points. Mm -hmm. And this really helped me, Ronnie, with my tracker strategy, because I did use a tracker as I was going through the lab exam, but I needed a just very simple tracker to track anything I might have skipped. And sure enough, the only thing on it was non-core tasks like 1.2. It's something involving spanning tree protocol. It's worth two points. And I think it's BPDU guard or 3.2 MCAS, three points. Hmm, reading that, I think it's bi-directional PIM, but I'm gonna go ahead and come back to that and worry about it later. Notice interestingly in my example here, multicast, which could be core, other points might depend on that, but in my example here, I'm saying I've read it over and nope, the multicast, whether I configured it or not, is not gonna make any difference. And if that's the case, it's a non-core task and it might be something that I'm skipping. By the way, Ronnie, what I did with the skip task task tracker, which you probably already thought of, was I went through everything I could do, all my core tasks were solved, all my non-core tasks were solved that I could do, and then at the very end of the day, I was left with this skipped task tracker, and now I knew exactly how much time on the clock I could dedicate to researching these things. Maybe in the online documentation they give you, yeah, or just at the command line, just playing awesome. and seeing if I could figure it out. Right. Yeah. So kind of a two for one today in our uh, journey to CCIE, talking about dividing the tasks up into core and non-core and what that means for me, and also the utilization of something like a skipped task tracker as you are going through your lab exam. All right. So when you have tasks that are actually in front of you then, and it lists like one, two, three, four, five, you don't have to do all five of those. You can actually skip around and do some of them. Yes, you are going to be moving forwards and backwards all that okay. you want through the tasks, Ronnie. Yes, yeah. indeed. And and I'm so old that it was printed in a book. And so you had pages of a book, right, when I took it. But now for you, all of your tasks are, are going to be right in the interface. But the big important thing is, Ronnie, yeah, you're moving backwards and, and forwards through those tasks. You'll see a lot of CCIEs recommend that, oh yeah, you don't go through it top to bottom. Uh, in fact, a lot of CCIEs, and, and I love this recommendation, Ronnie, if you can start with, let's say, layer two, or you can start with, well, a better example is, let's say they've already configured layer two for you. If they've already configured it for you, you're probably gonna have to troubleshoot it, by the way. But let's just say it's configured, and so now you're looking where to start, and you could start at layer three, or maybe you could start at uh, maybe some BGP tasks or something, so layer three external. Whenever you're having that choice of where to start or what to do next, always go with your strengths. 
So that's like great stuff there, right? Where you're building your confidence early in the lab configuration section, and then that pays great dividends later on. Uh, any other questions about this, Ronnie? Did that all make sense? I mean, once I started thinking about and dividing the tasks into these two buckets, it did all kinds of wonders for me. Yeah, no, that was very helpful, at least in thinking about the very fact of going in with a strategy it is probably going to be more beneficial and helpful than trying to just uh, take it as it comes and then figure out that you're not really confident as you hit those first things that you're not, you know, super strong in. That's right. And, you know, we, the strategy is a very personal thing. So everyone kind of works out their own. And I love what you said there, like having one, that's a really good first step. And right. you can practice with your strategy, right? When you're at home practicing and make sure you're comfortable with it. Well, we want to thank everyone for joining us in this episode of The Journey to CCIE starring Ronnie Wong. Don't forget, we'll be making more of these episodes for you. Don't miss them. Subscribe to our channel here at IT Pro TV and maybe even click on that bell so you get notified the minute we post a new episode. Thanks so much, everyone.